What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another Pitching Ninja's filthiest pitches of the day. I am Pitching Ninja, and I'm here with a traveling Will Leahy. I almost said traveling Will Berries. <laughs> Just a traveling Will Leahy. Ninja, I'm kicking in Pittsburgh, and I want to give a shout out to everybody in the comments yesterday who gave me tips to where to go in Pittsburgh. Much appreciated. Went to Permanti Bros yesterday already. Got the Pittsburgher, which is a slab of meatloaf, a bunch of fries stacked on at a mile high, some coleslaw, tomatoes, an absolutely hideous sandwich, Ninja. But for some reason, with the beer, the grease, delicious. Just great recommendations, guys. Keep them coming. I love it. What are you doing today, Ninja? I'm watching baseball all day. Anything else? There's a holiday that's a little near and dear to your heart, I, I heard. I didn't say I was going to watch it straight sober. Oh, there It'd we be go. be high as a kite. It's 420, oh, Will. Hey. And in honor of 420, why don't we name our favorite baseball-related 420 references? The all 420 team. Let's do it, Ninja. What do you got? I'm going to start out with Dave Smoke Stewart. I'm going to go with Corbin Burns, who is pitching today. Fantastic. Bill Spaceman Lee. Because he's a huge marijuana advocate. Commissioner Bowie Kuhn once suspended him for talking about smoking pot in a magazine. And Bill Lee said, I didn't say I smoked it. I said I used it. I sprinkled it on my pancakes. So there. It's one way to get high. Gavin Stoned. Gavin is also pitching today. Tyler J. Jack Leiter. Brandon McCarthy, who ended his career with a 420 ERA and coincidentally 69 wins. Tim Lincecum, just because. I mean, Tim Lincecum, noted stoner. And it'll be coached by Rich Doobie and our MVP, Jay Baller, which is one of the greatest names of all time. Do you have anybody for us, Will? Well, I figured Dusty Baker could also help out on, on the staff. And then uh, to close out games, we'll bring in Jonathan Papelbong. And, that, and that's the squad, Nidge. I think uh, it's a pretty good rotation. Dude, you do not want to mess with us. You just want to chill and abide. <laughs> Now we're going to start with our whip around the league. A.J. Puck had four strikeouts in three innings, giving up seven runs. He had these fastballs and picked up a White Castle special. He faced Jemison Tyone, who had four Ks in five innings, giving up one run on three hits. It was a season debut, and he looked good. He had these sliders and curveballs. Tyler Anderson had two Ks in seven innings, giving up one earned run. He had this fastball and changeup. He faced Nick Lodolo. Who had seven strikeouts and six in the third innings, giving up one run, and again looked fantastic. He had these heaters, and of course, these wicked breaking balls. Again, I don't know how anybody ever hits this dude. They are just coming from way over there. Huge break, nasty. We got a sword call from an announcer this game. And they are sword. Way to go. And then this umpire confusion. We have a fastball that is called a ball that's clearly a strike, right painted. And then we have this fastball, it's called the strike, that's clearly a ball. And I think this is like two consecutive hitters or something here. This is rotten. Brian Bayo had seven Ks and six scoreless innings, giving up only one hit and looked brilliant. He had these sliders and change-ups and picked up nine whiffs on his change-up. He faced Quinn Priester, had two Ks and four and a third innings, giving up four earned runs and had this change-up. Garrett Crochet had three Ks in three innings, giving up seven runs. Had this fastball and cutter, but there's no way Garrett Crochet with that stuff should be giving up seven runs. He faced Spencer Turnbull, who had six Ks and seven scoreless innings, giving up only one hit. Had these sweepers, including this painted sweeper. Justin Verlander had four Ks and six innings, giving up two runs. Had these fastballs, including this painish fastball. And then dropped this nasty deuce. <laughs> he faced Mackenzie Gore. We had four Ks in four innings, giving up three runs. It is elevated fastball and painted fastball. Didn't quite look like the dominant gore that we saw last outing, but stuff's still there. Tyler Alexander, it really messes me up when we have Tyler Anderson and Tyler Alexander pitching in the same day. At four Ks in five and a third innings, giving up no runs on two hits. He had this paintish fastball and this changeup. He faced Clark Schmidt with seven Ks in five and a third innings, giving up one run. He had this front door two seamer, this nasty cutter, and this wicked sweeper, and had these sick knuckle curves, picking up a sword on a knuckle curve. Tristan McKenzie had six Ks in five innings, giving up one run on three hits, and looked more like the Tristan McKenzie that we know and love. He had these sliders and curveballs, and I did this overlay of his fastball and curveball, just so you can see how he can get hitters both based on the drop of that curveball as well as a change in velo from his fastball. He faced Joe Boyle 
who had three Ks in six innings, giving up seven runs, reverting back to the Joe Boyle that I kind of didn't like the other outing. Boyle had this elevated fastball and the slider. Chris Sale looked ridiculous at times yesterday with seven Ks and seven innings, giving up three runs. But his stuff, man, vintage Chris Sale. Picked up a White Castle special here and then a White Castle special against Seager, making him look like he never has seen a slider before. Look at this abuse. My absolute favorite ex-Red Sox ninja, the, the martyr of the 2018 World Series champion Red Sox. I love seeing this guy look as awesome as he looked yesterday. He really did. He also threw this fastball where he got Langford hitting like the game was lagging. Look how late he swings at this. It's amazing. And then again, you have an umpire make a call here and it looks like the game's lagging again. I think maybe just the Braves Rangers game was lagging overall. It's very possible Ninja living in the simulation that we're in. He faced Andrew Heaney, who had five Ks in five innings, giving up three runs, and had these fastballs, including this painted fastball and this slider. Dean Kramer had three Ks in five and two-thirds innings, giving up three runs. He had these fastballs, including this painted fastball, and had one up to 97 miles an hour. That's some heat from Dean Kramer. He also had this cutter. And he faced Alec Marsh, who had six Ks in five and two-thirds innings, giving up no runs, and these fastballs and curveballs, and picked up a sword on his curveball. That curveball was kind of nasty. Joe Ryan had six Ks in five and a third innings, giving up four runs. He had these fastballs and sweepers. He faced Jack Flaherty, who looked really good. He had 10 Ks in six innings, giving up four runs. Had these sliders and picked up a sword on his slider and these hammer curveballs. I mean, Jack Flaherty was definitely showing flashes of brilliance. Kyle Gibson had three Ks in six innings, giving up one run and had this change up and sweeper. He faced electric Freddy Peralta, who had seven Ks in six scoreless innings, giving up four runs. Peralta had these fastballs, including this painted fastball, and got absolutely fired up here, getting out of a bases-loaded jam, and also had this nasty slider. Peralta is a top-tier pitcher. I don't know. Will, what is Peralta's Cy Young odds right now? Ninja Fanduel's got him at plus 600, which is second only to Zach Wheeler. Yariel Rodriguez had four Ks in seven innings, giving up one run. He looked very good with these sliders and splitters. He faced Matt Waldron with two Ks in four and two thirds innings, giving up five runs. But again, runs are irrelevant when you're throwing knuckleballs, and he got two Ks with these knuckleballs. Jordan Montgomery had three Ks in six innings, giving up one run. He had this elevated fastball and curveball. He faced Blake Snell, who had three Ks in four and two thirds innings, giving up five runs. Bringing his ERA right now to 11.57. Sean Manaya had three Ks in five innings, giving up two runs. He had these fastballs and sweepers. And he faced Yoshinobu Yamamoto, who went six innings with nine Ks. Nice. But gave up four runs, three of them being earned. Not as nice. His stuff actually looked really good. He had a hard time at times putting hitters away, but he did have these wicked splitters, including this three-splitter K. His curveball looked really good, and he picked up a three curveball K here. He painted with both of these pitches. Here's an isolated view of both his curveball and splitter. You can see how nasty those pitches are. But in the major leagues, hitters hunt heaters, and I think that's what's happening to Yamamoto right now. I still expect with that stuff that his ERA is going to be fairly low at the end of the year, and expect him to put together a few really good starts as he adjusts to hitters in the major leagues. By the way, just like that, the the Mets are incredibly have a have a better winning percentage than the Dodgers right now. And you called it preseason. I was on the Dodgers and you were like, I'm taking the under. Well, we'll see. It's a little too early to count my chickens. My filthiest relievers of the day, Brian Abreu with this sword on a slider. Tyler Beatty with a bend the knee curveball. Jason Foley with this nasty sinker. Trevor McGill with this hundred mile an hour gas. Griffin Jacks with these filthy sweepers. Brock Stewart with this painted fastball. Jimmy Garcia with this sweeper, fastball, and curveball king the side. Jake Diekman with these fastballs. And Tom Cosgrove with this sweeper that broke 18 inches to the plate. My top five filthiest pitches of the day. I'm going to go with Cam Boozer for this fastball. And it's not because anything's filthy with this fastball. It's just out of honor for Cam Boozer. Boozer came back from Tommy John from a broken back 
riding a bicycle, getting hit by a car, as well as a drug suspension. He was a carpenter and out of baseball, coaching baseball, and then realized he can throw flames. He actually posted his stuff on Flatground, which is a Twitter account that I started to get players seen who have maybe been out of the game or they're high school guys looking for colleges. But he is one of many pro guys to get signed out of Flatground. And you can see after the game, Boozer breaks down on the bench. Just a huge moment for Boozer. A big pitching ninja and Will Leahy round of applause. <laughs> Fernando Cruz had this painted fastball and splitter, and that man has turned himself into such a weapon. At number three, Keegan Thompson had these sweepers. At number two, Nick Lodolo's breaking balls. I mean, Lord, this stuff is disgusting. At number one, we have Chris Sale for these sliders, specifically these ones against Seeger. That is just totally not fair. And now, my Pitching Ninja moment of zen. It's Alec Benoa on the comeback trail, getting two balls with one strike. My picks of the day today are a three-leg parlay. I'm going to take a same-game parlay of Corbin Burns and Cole Reagans, both for 6Ks or more. And I'm going to top it off with Cutter Crawford for 6Ks or more. What would your picks of the day be?